This project was quite a roller coaster to strap on. <laughs> so I've always been a huge fan of historical fashion. I did not go to school for anything related to that, but I just love watching uh, historical dramas, historical movies, uh, anything period, and also anything related to costumes. I may not be an expert, but I'm definitely an aficionado. <laughs> I've always wanted to make historical costumes just for fun. Maybe not using exactly the techniques of the time, but, you know, at least wearing something that was as, as close as possible as I can make. I've learned that it's very, very important to have the right undergarments to create the right shape, depending on the time period you want to dress as. Uh, that really is literally the foundation of the dress. So that was always something that kind of stopped me or held me back because I've, I'm self-taught, I'm a self-taught sewist. I only have been sewing for like maybe four years since the pandemic started. So it, you know, was very daunting. And I did try a few times to make undergarments for different eras, failed. Uh, I think for different reasons, I didn't have the right the right tools or I didn't have as in knowledge or I didn't have um, even the right fabric to begin with. So it took a few, you know, failed attempts to get to this point. I got to say that off the bat. The reason I chose 1840s specifically was because somehow everything ties back to Broadway for me. I love Broadway shows and one of my favorite shows came out last year or came back as a revival which was Sweeney Todd and I don't know I was just dying to see it and I remember being a teenager and being obsessed with that show and so it's almost like I became a teenager again and I was obsessed with it it's all I listened to for months and eventually I did go to see it later that year and it just completely blew my mind it was an amazing experience I loved it so much and one of the things that I was like, kind of like immediately drawn to was the costumes. So one of the things that I left with was like, I so want to make like a costume. And also it was not historical, but it's based on a historical period that was real. And after doing some investigating and reading about what the period of the show was and also looking at the costumes themselves, it was clear that they were going for like 1840s in the costumes. And so I thought, okay, perfect. I can make a Halloween costume for um, Sweeney Todd where I love making couples costumes if you've seen some of my videos before. And I wanted my husband to be Sweeney Todd and me to be Mrs. Lovett who is so fun and so crazy and I love her. She's my favorite character. But one thing that leads to another, right? So I'm like, I want to wear, you know, 1840s style dress inspired by her costume, which means I need undergarments, which means I need to make at least a corset and a shift, uh, which I do not have at all. And I have never made, especially the corset. It was a little scary. And I, you know what? I said... Let's go for it. Let's do it. Let's just make my first ever corset. And of course, that didn't work out because it's way past Halloween and I just finished the undergarment. So I don't know that I will still make a full on Mrs. Lovett costume or if I'll go for something more, again, Dickensian <laughs> or um, I don't know, something else, just 1840s dress. But now that I have the undergarments, I feel like I can. Making the corset itself was not as hard as I thought it would be. And I think one of the reasons I failed before was probably because I didn't choose the right pattern in the past. Maybe even the era itself. It's not like a super stiff corset and that probably helps. Uh, it doesn't have that many channels, boning. And yeah, I think it was a good one to begin with uh, accidentally. I found this pattern on Etsy. It's a great Etsy shop that has a lot of historical costume garments and undergarments for main, men and women. And it's called Black Snail Patterns. I love her. The instructions are super clear. She has some historical context in the patterns. The patterns are, well, at least this one that I bought was like really easy to make and to follow. And also looks very historically accurate as for my, you know, not super 
knowledgeable eye. So I'm glad I chose this one. And whatever other patterns I chose before, I think they're just not as good. Not, or more complicated the way they were constructed. I don't know. The pattern itself comes with... It's like all of the undergarments. So it includes the, um, the chemise, the shift, the corset, and a petticoat. That's like a quilted petticoat. I didn't actually make the petticoat. I wanted to make like another kind of petticoat and want to work for quilted. I don't know if I'll ever make it or not, but I have it now. So that's great. The chemise was actually really cute. I really liked it. It's kind of off shoulder and very loose yeah it was a lot more complicated than I expected it but still pretty simple in a way and I'm I know that this is specifically for the shape of the 1840s the shift but I'm hoping that I can wear it with other eras if I end up making other era on their garments uh just because it's like it's it's just a chemise so hopefully it'll work for other things um it is a little hard to move your arms with it uh i actually did end up making it a little too small so i did have to to redo the top part to make it a little larger and even then it's still like a little constrictive but i think that's just the shape of the time like that off the shoulder rounded neck uh, or maybe i did it wrong i don't know so I made this, it started with the chemise and I actually finished that quite quickly, but I was going back and forth between the chemise and the corset. And the corset itself, like I said, it's not actually super complicated. It's tied in the back and it does have a uh, busk in the front. So this time I was like, I'm going to get the right materials for this. I'm not going to just try to put something together with what I had. I got a busk from... Etsy if you don't know what a busk is because I didn't know either <laughs> it is like a metal enclosing it's it's metal and secure on the front and it does have like this sort of eyelets where they're not quite buttons but they help close the corset in the front uh, without tying it so you tie it on the back and close it on the front but it also keeps it straight for the fabric I went with the recommendation in the pattern and also what I like looking up online have found before which was to use coutil fabric which is just kind of like a strong woven fabric that it's just a little th thicker and um keeps the shape better and then for the inside i just used plain co white cotton which is the same one that i used for the chemise uh this is the first time i ever worked with coutil and i i got one yard i think or maybe one and a half i can't remember and i have some leftover maybe enough to make another corset like a regency one maybe i don't know it's such great fabric and it makes all the difference i think the last time i tried to make a corset i used just whatever fabric cotton fabric i had lying around and nowhere near as much like shape and just everything about it, it just even feels nice i thought i'm this is my first time working with it like i said so it did make such a difference to go ahead and get that fabric. So I'm glad that I did that. And then other than that, I needed the busk, plastic whalebone for the boning, bias binding. I didn't make my own bias binding this time. It's like, I don't have time for that. I'm just going to buy it. And grommets with washers, which was also my first time using them. And they were pretty simple to use. So no problems there. I was very careful uh, with cutting my pieces exactly to the size I actually did make a mock-up for this and I realized that I needed it to be a little bit longer just because I I've always have this problem I have a longer torso so for almost everything I make I have to make it a little bit longer I also realized that I had to go up a size I think when I made the mock-up and so I did figure out some of these issues glad that I made the mock-up I also got some corset lacing I guess it's more like it is lacing that just kind of looks like shoelace it works fine but I think next time I might use ribbon or something prettier I don't like the way it looks as much like I said I was just going by the book this time just to make sure I did everything right and yeah so that's the background <laughs> behind why I made this and kind of the like experience and thoughts as I went I do want to show you the process of everything that I recorded as I made the corset and the chemise. So I'll walk you through it and if you end up making the same pattern or if like me you're not as experienced with period costuming and want to try it, it might be like something cool to watch and kind of get into the mood. I also love process videos so this 
it's gonna be for those of you who also love process videos and then i'll see you at the end and give you like my final thoughts on this interesting project I started by cutting all of my pieces, both from the main fabric and from the lining fabric. And from the lining fabric, I also cut the chemise pieces. I had a big stack of chemise pieces and corset pieces. The first order was to fold in the creases of where the gusset is going to be inserted for the bust, which is basically just an extra piece of fabric and I just had to make sure that it was basted in and folded correctly and then I top stitched all of it. This goes for the lining and for the main fabric. So it was four pieces times two gussets each. With the gussets in place, I started sewing each of the pieces together. As you can see, there's a really large seam allowance because that's what we're going to use for making the channels. And each side of the corset had four pieces. And this goes also for the lining, which is basically exactly the same. I then basted to the lining a twill ribbon where exactly where the waist is going to go. And that just keeps the shape of the corset later. And I didn't have to sew it in, it's going to be caught by when we sew the boning channels. I top stitch along every single seam for the lining and for the top layer. And as you can see, this starts catching that twill ribbon as well. I matched the top layer to the lining right sides together with the back seam and I sew them together. This is for each side of the corset. Next was the busk, which was very interesting. I started by marking the one side of the busk where uh, these little inserts were gonna go. And the idea is that you sew to each mark, then you stop, you leave the space, and then you sew to the next mark that way. When we turn it inside out, it's gonna fit perfectly in there. Of course, you gotta make sure that you back stitch there so that none of these stitches fall off later. Here I am turning around the piece so that we can insert that side of the busk. As you can see, it fits perfectly. And now all that's left is we gotta secure that in place. To do that, you just kind of enclose it. You, you sew around it using a zipper foot as close as possible to it so that it doesn't move. I previously basted it in place as well. For the other side of the busk, we're gonna make sure that it lines up perfectly. And then this side, I am gonna mark where each of the holes of uh, those, those little buttons are gonna go. And I simply make a, a hole with my seam ripper and I insert them in there. And then I just, uh, like before, sew around it to enclose it. Here is how that final busk looks like and it closes kind of hard, but it once it's in, it does not open, so it's very secure. This next part involved securing the top layer seams with the lining seam so they are perfectly matching and I basted them together so that then we can run the machine over them and basically secure the each of the seams to each other and now we're ready to create those channels for the boning I, I think it was about half an inch of the seam and I just kind of follow that using my machine it was pretty easy to do and also I had to sew the channels that would go on the back of the corset to lace it because it has extra boning there. I do recommend doing one test channel before you do all of them. Before inserting all the boning, I made sure to trim the excess fabric and to make sure that all of the layers were lining up. As you can see, the top especially was a little messy and I did the same at the bottom of the corset as well. And before inserting the boning, I had to sew at the bottom of the corset all the layers together just to close that up, but I leave the open top so that we can insert on the channels all the boning. Here I am kind of measuring it and cutting it, always leaving a little bit of space at the top because we're gonna sew in also um, to finish it off. And also to make sure that this boning was not folding because it comes, you know, folded up 
I did have to iron it a little bit and that worked pretty well. It's plastic so it's very easy to mold and here I am inserting that final boning into the channels pretty easily. All that's left is the grommet so that we can actually lace this corset. I made a little hole that I then made bigger with my scissors and then I insert the grommet from the front to the back. It's pretty easy and simple. Then you use the tool that comes with them. It's this little tool that you just hammer in so that it closes up and covers the hole. And we're almost done. All I have was left was to finish it up with bias binding. I also sew in the top that was the same way that I did the bottom once I had inserted the channels. And then I added the bias binding the way I do with any other bias binding, just sewing it to the front and then folded it in and hand sewing it to the back. Now my corset was ready, but it needed to be laced. So I didn't know how to lace it. I had to watch some videos. I'll link them in my description that were very useful. And I used the double cross technique, I think it's called. I made sure to leave some long loops kind of around the waist so that I can lace it myself. They call it bunny ears. And here it is all laced with a little bunny ear to pull it. So here is the final result. Here I am lacing it for the first time. This is the first time I ever wore it. It was pretty easy to lace just by pulling on those bunny ears. And here is the corset finished. I think it looks great. I was wearing it a little low. It has to actually come a little higher. But it closed and I'm really happy with it. So I still can't believe I actually finished it. Um, I tried it on before before it was done a few times. And I did have a moment of panic of like, oh my God, I'm not gonna be able to close this. But thankfully, I mean, it wasn't finished and I think the boning helped. And I also, I think I did end up actually taking out a little bit from the back because of that. But it does fit, it did fit me. And I think it fits fabulously. I think it's actually really comfortable. I I mean I've only worn corsets in the context of like when a, like a fancy dress that already has like a built-in cor corset but it's not quite the same especially wearing it with a chemise which I never done and it's a must you have to you have to wear it with a chemise lacing it was <laughs> interesting I had to watch a couple of YouTube videos on how to lace a corset because I wasn't sure how to like make it work. It's not quite the same as lacing your shoelaces. Um, so that was an adventure. And now I'm really looking forward to actually making a dress that goes with it. Like I said, I am not sure if that means Mrs. Lovett or something else. Um, maybe just a 1840s dress for no reason. Because it's fun. Because it would look great on it. I might see what else in a nearby period that might fit the shape I could make with it and it gave me confidence to try other periods I think one that I am really really a big fan of is the Regency era I know a lot of people don't like Regency because of the empire waist you, you know people say it's not very flattering but I love Jane Austen and I love the Regency era and I think it would be very fun to dress up in it and I feel confident that I could make, and now I feel confident that I could make a corset and undergarments and dress for that. And it might be a simpler or easier thing to begin with making a full on outfit. Just because I think those dresses, that period is just a little simpler and might need less undergarment, undergarments than making a 1940s dress. I definitely understand estimated how much work would go into it when I was like yeah I'll just make this for Halloween but let me just start with a whole corset but it was a fun fun project it gave me a lot of confidence I felt like I learned a lot from it I learned a lot of techniques and I realized that I can do it and it can fit and I just have to give myself the time and the patience to actually get through the whole thing 
that's the story behind this fun project and my first period costume adventure i hope there's a lot more coming like i said i'm looking forward for a regency i have to make a dress for this corset and who knows what else i hope you enjoy it and that you get inspired too and you know let's go put on some corsets and break some myths about it <laughs> thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe for more stuff in the future relating to period costuming um looking at knitting and sewing and costumes in media and and also a lot of vintage knitting and a bunch of other fun projects that i uh, have in the works happy sewing <laughs>